Hello everybody, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Ed Puzzle Lecture Notes. Now remember, if you are playing this video but you're not really watching and you're not taking notes, you're really not you're really not doing your work. That is a good way to get into bio RTI every Wednesday and Thursday. If you want to stay out of that, get your grade up to a C, B, or maybe an A, take some notes, pay attention. But anyways, we're out of ecology finally after like a month and a half. And we're into biochemistry. Biochemistry, a little bit of chemistry, but how it relates to life or biology. All right, so you're probably wondering, why are we teaching chemistry and biology? Well, life, biology, depends on chemistry. Without it, none of us would be alive. When you eat your food, when you digest your food, that, those are chemical reactions which break down that food to give you energy. And to get that energy, those are more chemical reactions to turn into ATP energy that you can use. Breathing, oxygen and carbon dioxide, getting oxygen into your blood and getting carbon dioxide out. Those are all chemical reactions. Even the feelings that you are feeling right now, you're like, this is the boringest thing ever. Well, those are influenced by chemicals in your brain. That's chemistry. So anyways, here we go into the world of biochemistry. All right, so here is matter. What is matter? The defini definition of matter is anything that has mass, remember mass is kind of like weight, and it occupies space, so it takes up room. Now, what is mass? So it says anything that has mass. Mass is kind of like weight. It's the amount of matter an object has. Now, here on Earth, weight and mass is the same, but remember, if you ever are an astronaut and you go to the moon, your mass will not change. You will have the same amount of matter in your body. However, your weight will change. Your weight will go way down because weight is the effect of gravity on an object. And since the moon has less gravity than the earth, you will weigh less on the moon. But you will still contain the same amount of matter. You will still have the same mass. Now here's a question for you. If you had a balloon, one balloon is totally filled up with air, totally filled up with air, and the other balloon is totally flat. Which balloon is going to weigh more if you put them both on a scale? Which one is going to weigh more? Well, the answer to that question is this balloon right here, of course, is going to weigh more because this air that it was blown inside of it, it is matter. Those have atoms, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. Those are matter. They'll have, those have mass. So this balloon is going to weigh more than this empty balloon, which has nothing in it. Okay, so the basic unit of all matter, matter, things that have mass and occupy space, like you, you're full of matter. You have mass, you weigh something, and you occupy space, obviously. Well, the basic unit is something called an atom. Hopefully, you guys have heard that before in middle school or elementary school, whatever. Well, atoms are made of three different type of subatomic particles. The first one's called a proton. Protons have a positive charge, and those guys are located within the nucleus. So, this guy up here, this atom, the nucleus would be that little red ball in the middle. Those are the, where the protons are going to be found. Also in the nucleus are these particles called neutrons. Now, neutrons have a neutral or no charge at all. No charge. And they're also located, just like the protons, within the nucleus. Now, another very, very important subatomic particle is the electron. Those guys have a negative charge. And those guys are flying around the nucleus in various levels or electron clouds. So the electrons would be these guys right here, flying around the nucleus. And a little diagram of a helium atom. So here in the nucleus, the nucleus, we have the protons and neutrons. Here are the neutrons, neutral charge, helium. It's helium because it has two protons. Helium always has two protons in the, nucle in the nucleus. And to equal it out, it also has two electrons flying around, flying around the, uh, the nucleus of the atom. 
Now I want you to see that helium has two protons and two electrons. Well, in this first energy level or this first level of electrons, it can only hold two. That's all it can hold. So helium is totally happy with its two electrons. On the next electron cloud that's going to form outside of that, in some other elements, it can hold eight electrons. And what you need to know is all elements want to get eight electrons in their outer shell, or if they're like helium, they only want to have two in their outer shell. So they want to have their outer electron shell filled. So for the helium, the first electron is filled with two. But for all the other elements, they want to fill it up to eight. And here's the periodic table of elements. You don't need to know all these guys. In chemistry, you'll have to know most of them, but not in biology. But what I want you to know is, going down, these are the groups. That's group one, group two. I don't even care about these guys. Transition metals, forget about them. We go straight to group three, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then 17 and 18. So what I want you to know is, all these guys in group one, they have one electron in their outer shell. And hopefully you remember from this previous slide that all electrons either want to have two in their outer shell, like helium had on the last slide, or they want to have eight. So these guys right here in group one with only one electron, they either want to gain one to get two, or they want to lose it. So, these guys over here, these guys in the green, those are the noble gases. They all have eight electrons in their outer shell, at least all these guys going down. Helium here has two, if you remember, and two is perfect because its outer shell is full. All these other guys, like boron and carbon and nitrogen, they all want to get over here with the green guys so their outer shell of electrons are filled. So, some of these guys either want to give up electrons or they want to gain electrons. Like oxygen over here, it always wants to gain one, two electrons, so it can have its outer shell of electrons filled, just like these noble gases over here. Now these guys over here, with one electron, they usually want to get rid of that electron. Get rid of it, because the next shell would be full, and they would have a full eight electrons in their outer shell. And that's basically all chemical bonding is. Why do, why do atoms form chemical bonds to make molecules or compounds? Because they all want to try and fill their outer shell of electrons to fill it up with eight. And now elements and compounds. What is a chemical element? Well, a chemical element is a pure substance. Pure it consists entirely of only one type of atom. So if you had like a chunk of gold that was 100% just gold atoms, boom, that's an element. So that's gold. If you have pure oxygen, that's an element because it's only oxygen in there. That's it. Phosphorus, uranium, all, all the uh, atoms, elements can make a pure substance, a chemical element. Now, what's a compound? Usually, things in nature, they're not in their pure form. Almost everything wants to make compounds. For example, this stuff right here that you spread on your french fries, that's sodium chloride or salt. It is one sodium atom bonded to one chlorine atom. Now, something I want you to see here is that the compounds that are made have nothing to do with the elements that make them up. So, for example, like I said, sodium chloride, salt, the stuff you spread on your french fries, it's made of sodium and chlorine. Well, sodium is an explosive metal that will blow up if you put it in water. Kind of a dangerous substance. What's chlorine? Chlorine is a toxic, poisonous gas. It killed thousands and thousands of people during World War I when they used it as, an, as a chemical weapon. But when you put those two things together, an explosive metal and a poisonous gas, what do you get? Sodium chloride. Totally harmless. Put it on your french fries, put it on your chips, put it wherever you want, and eat it with your food. And basic chemistry. 
what do the letters and numbers mean in these chemical formulas? Like, this is not really spelled good, but what does H2O mean? Remember, that's water. That is water. The water you drink. H2O, what does that mean? Well, it contains hydrogen. How many hydrogens does it contain? Well, it contains two hydrogens, because that's why that little number two is there. How many oxygens does it have? It's got one. How about this guy? You better become familiar with it, because we're going to need to know it. C6H12O6. That is glucose. That is a sugar. Well, what makes up glucose? It's got the C because it has carbon, carbon atoms in it, and it's got six carbon atoms. Well, why does it have the H there? Well, yeah, that H stands for hydrogen. And how many hydrogen atoms does it have in it in one glucose molecule? It has 12. And it also contains O or oxygen. How many oxygen atoms does it have? I'll wait for your answer. Hopefully you picked six, because that is what that six is there for, because glucose has six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. And now chemical bonding. The octet rule, I've kind of gone over it already. Remember, hydrogen and helium, they want to have two electrons in their outer shell. But everyone else, they want to get a full outer shell of eight electrons. So for atoms that only have seven, they want to add one electron to give them eight. Now, atoms that have one, there's no way they're going to add seven to get eight. But if they, can, if they can subtract that one, it won't equal zero because their next energy level of electrons will be full with eight. So some elements are, are wanting to get rid of electrons and other ones want to get them. And that's what's called the octet rule. They're all trying to get eight electrons, eight, eight, eight electrons in their outer shell. Now, one way they do this is through ionic bonds. Ionic. It's called ionic bonds because you form things called ions. Ions are charged particles. So remember, atoms, they'll have like, it's so like helium has two protons with a plus charge, and it has two electrons, which have a minus charge. Well, two and two will, will cancel each other out, and that'll have no charge. But... If an atom gains or loses electrons, it will now become an ion. Because if it loses one electron, it will now have more protons and it will get a positive charge. If it gets a positive charge, it will be called what's called a cat ion. Cat ion. If an electron or an atom gains electrons, it will now have more electrons than it does protons it'll then have a negative charge with more electrons. Those guys are called anions. So cat ions are positive because they lose electrons, and elements that gain electrons will become negative and become an anion. All right, so here's chlorine. This is an ion. Chlorine only has seven electrons in its outer shell, but here you can see it has two, four, six, Eight. Chlorine has stolen an electron from some atom. Now, one atom it loves to steal from is sodium. Well, how many electrons does sodium have in its outer shell? Well, sodium only has one in its outer shell. So sodium wants to give that electron up to chlorine, and chlorine loves to take it because then it'll fill that outer shell, not with seven, but with eight. And now, Sodium has its second level is filled with eight, so sodium would be happy. But since sodium has given up an electron, it now becomes a positive ion because it has one more proton than it does electrons because chlorine stole that electron. Well, chlorine, now that it has one more electron than it does protons, it has a negative charge. Well, I know you guys have always heard that opposites attract. So this positive so sodium will now be attracted to the negative chloride ion, and that's what gives you NaCl, or salt. Salt is formed because of an ionic bond. 
the transferring or stealing of electrons from one atom to another. And the other type of main type of chemical bond that we're going to talk about are co covalent bonds. And that's not where an atom steals or takes an electron, but this is when two or more atoms actually share electrons. So I'll try to say this over here. So like hydrogen, remember this is, this is water here. H2 means there's two hydrogens and you see two hydrogens there. O means there's one oxygen, there's one oxygen. Well, hydrogen has one valence electron. Now it wants to be like helium. Helium has two valence electrons. It wants to get like that. It wants to get two. Remember, all other elements want to get eight. But helium and hydrogen, they're happy with just two. So both of these hydrogen ap atoms are not happy because they both have just one electron. But this oxygen is always not, also not happy because it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. So oxygen wants to get, it wants to add two electrons because if it does, six plus two equals eight and all other atoms want to get eight electrons. So what happens here, oxygen shares its one electron with hydrogen right there and oxygen shares its other electron with hydrogen and hydrogen is also sharing its one electron with the oxygen. So now, both oxygen atoms think that they have two electrons in their outer shell, like helium, so they are happy. Oxygen, on the other hand, which only has six, but it's sharing these two here, sharing those two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oxygen all also thinks it has eight electrons in its outer shell. So oxygen is also very happy right now. And that's basically all chemical bonding is about. Try to make the atoms happy by filling their outer shell of electrons. All right. Thank you very much for listening. I know this is kind of confusing, but we'll go over it some more. So I'll talk to you next time.